Hello. In the last session, we were discussing about multi-stage amplifiers. Today, we are going to discuss a bit more detail about the multi-stage amplifier, and we are going to see some specific examples of multi-stage amplifiers. In multi-stage amplifiers, we are coming across a term called coupling. What is meant by coupling? In fact, coupling is a technique which is used in an amplifier to transfer a desired signal between different phases of the amplifying system. For example, imagine a single stage amplifier, a normal common electro amplifier. For the amplifier to amplify a signal, it needs to receive a signal from an input source. And we are using, say, some capacitors, sometimes inductors, sometimes some resistors, or sometimes a combination of inductors, capacitors, and resistors at the input side, so that a desired signal is given and fed into the input side of the amplifier or input side of the fan system. So this technique or the electronic circuit used at the input side is called the input coupling system. Likewise, at the output side also we are using capacitors, sometimes inductors, sometimes a combination of inductors, resistors and capacitors to take out the desired output to the load resistor. There also we are using circuits and these circuits consist of the coupling system at the output stage of the amplifier. So coupling is an essential part of any amplifying system. In the case of multi-stage amplifiers, the coupling assumed a special role, a special priority because not only at the input and output side, but at the intermediate stages or at the different stages of the amplifiers, the different stages or different phases of the amplifier, the multi-stage amplifier, we are using coupling. And the coupling scheme, the coupling technique or the coupling circuit that is used in between different stages of a multi-stage amplifier is called interstage coupling. Why we use this interstage coupling? There are many factors, many reasons for this. The basic reason is that you need to transfer only an AC signal from one stage to the next stage. No DC signal should go to the next stage because what we are amplifying is an AC signal, not a DC signal. The second reason is associated with the first reason itself. You cannot give the DC conditions of first stage to the second stage or any stage for that matter because if you give the DC condition of one stage into the other, the cuisine point of the second stage or the next stage will shift. And this will affect the operation, the efficiency, and the working of the amplifier system as a whole. So we need to isolate different stages of the amplifier. For this purpose, also, we are using uh, the interstate coupling. So these are the reasons by which we are depending largely on interstage coupling, particularly in the case of multi-stage amplifiers. Now let's think about different types of coupling schemes. The first one is the resistance capacitance coupling or simply RC coupling. This is the most important method of coupling uh, of the signal from one stage to the next stage in the case of a multi-stage amplifier. In this method, the signal developed across the collector resistor. Here, RC1 is a collector resistor of the first stage of the amplifier. And this is coupled through the capacitor C and given to the base of the next stage. The cascading stages amplify the signal and overall gain is equal to the product of the individual stage gains. These type of amplifiers are called resistance capacitance coupled multi-stage amplifiers. Now we have another stage, another type of amplifier called impedance coupling multi-stage amplifier. There is a picture of an impedance coupling amplifier. Here you are not finding any collector capacitor. Instead, 
an inductor is placed at the collector of the first stage and at the second stage also we have an inductor instead of resistor now what happens is as the frequency increases the inductive reactance of these inductors increases and when the frequency increases very much these inductors act as open circuits or in other words the inductors pass direct current but they block alternating current or AC. So these type of amplifiers are called the impedance coupling amplifiers. Then we have another type of coupling scheme called the transformer coupling. It's a third type of coupling. Here is a picture of a transformer coupling. In this method, the primary winding of a transformer act as a collector lock. There is no resistor at the collector, but the primary winding of a transformer is acting as the collector load. Then the secondary winding, the secondary winding conveys the AC output signal directly to the base of the next stage. There is no coupling capacitor in the transformer coupling. So such coupling schemes are called the transformer coupling multi-stage amplifiers. Finally, we have a direct coupling scheme and it is shown here. You are not finding any transformers or capacitors here. This is the speciality of this type of coupling. We are not using any special devices such as capacitors, inductors or resistors in the case of direct amplifiers. The AC output signal is for directly into the next stage. Now, this could be used only at low frequency signals. And why we are not using any capacitors or inductors at this type of coupling? Because when you are using a low frequency AC, the size of the capacitors to be used for coupling will be very large. So we are avoiding these capacitors and inductors. So these are the different types of coupling schemes that we can find in multi-stage coupling schemes. We need to study a bit more detail about the LC coupled amplifier. As shown, it has three stages. The first stage, the coupling stage, and the second stage. Now you can see that the circuit consists of two single stage common emitter transistor amplifiers. This is transistor amplifier one, common amplifier configuration and this is transistor amplifier 2 with common amplifier configuration. Now the resistors RC, RB and the capacitor CC, these three together forms the coupling network. Now we have capacitor C1, this capacitor is used to couple the input signal to the base of Q1 and we have another capacitor C2 which is used to couple the output signal from the stage two or the final stage to the load resistor. We have two more capacitors CE. We have two CE capacitors, the emitter bypass capacitors, which are very, very important, which bypass the emitter to the ground. And these capacitors ensure the voltage gain of each stage of the amplifier. Now, how does this work? When you apply an AC signal at the input of this first stage, this is amplified by the transistor and the amplified output appears across the collector resistor RC. And this signal is given to the collector capacitor, the coupling capacitor CC and the coupling capacitor gives it to the base of the second transistor Q2, blocking all the DC components from the stage one. Now, the second stage amplifies this signal, which is obtained further, and finally gives it at the low resistor. So in this way, the cascaded stages amplify the signal and the overall gain 
is equal to the product of the individual stages. Here we have two stages, so the overall gain will be the product of gain at stage one and gain at stage two. Now, one more important feature of the RC coupled amplifier is that the output signal and the input signal of a two stage RC coupled amplifier is in phase because the phase has been reversed twice by the amplifier. It is reversed first at the amplifier 1, Q1, and again, once again, it is reversed by the transistor Q2. So the input and output signals will be in phase. We know that the total voltage gain is the product of individual gains. In a two-stage amplifier, let the first amplification, voltage amplification is AV1, and the second voltage amplification is AV2 of the two stages respectively. This is our RC coupled amplifier, and the gain is given by the formula AV equal to AV1 into AV2 equal to R01 by RE1 prime into R02 by RE2 prime, where R01 is the output resistance of stage 1, R01 is given by RC parallel RI2, where RI2 is the input resistance of stage 2, RO2 is the output resistance of stage 2, where RO2 is given by the formula RC parallel RL, RL is the load resistor which is parallel to RC. RE1 prime and RE2 prime are nothing but the emitter diode resistance of transistor Q1 and Q2, respectively. RI2 is the input resistance of the second transistor, which is given by the parallel combination of base resistor and beta2 RE2 prime, where beta2 is the amplifi current amplification factor of transistor 2, and R E2 prime is the resistance offered by the emitter diode of transistor Q2. And this value is almost equal to B2 into R E2 prime because Rb is much larger than beta 2 R E2 prime. So this could be almost equal to beta 2 into R E2 prime. Likewise, R I1, the input resistance of stage 1, is Rb parallel beta 1 re1 prime where beta 1 is the current amplification of transistor 1 and re1 prime is the emitter diode resistance of transistor 1 and this is also equal to beta 1 into re1 prime now re1 prime and re2 prime could be calculated using the formula 25 divided by ie1 and 25 divided by ie2 respectively where ie1 is the emitter current of transistor 1 expressed in milliamperes and IE2 is the emitter current of transistor 2 which is also expressed in milliamperes. Now we shall see the frequency response curve of RC coupled amplifier. So what is a frequency response curve? The frequency response curve of an amplifier is a graph which indicates the relationship between the voltage gain uh, as a function of frequency. Usually, the voltage gain is expressed in decibels and uh, the gain is expressed in y-axis and the frequency is expressed in x-axis. You can see the frequency response curve here and you can note that uh, the graph drops off or uh, it's a written roll off. It rolls off at low frequencies, see, below 50 hertz and above 20 kilohertz and it remains almost a constant between this uh, 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz range. You are not going to get uh, appreciable gain at the low frequency range and an appreciable gain at the high frequency range. Now let's analyze this a bit further. See, at the low frequency range, what happens is the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to frequency. We know the capacitive reactance is always inversely proportional frequency because 
capacitor reactance is given by the formula 1 by c omega so as the frequency increases the capacitive reactance decreases so at low frequencies the reactance of the capacitor uh, the coupling capacitor cc will be very high therefore it will allow only a small portion of the signal to pass to the next stage so as a result uh, the amplification uh, the total amplification decreases and that's why we are getting a lesser voltage gain at the low frequency region now what happens at the high frequency region at the high frequency uh, the reactance of the capacitor uh, is very small and therefore uh, it behaves almost like a short circuit as a result of this, uh, the loading effect of the next stage, see, the second stage increases and the loading effect if increases, that will reduce the gain. Besides this, we have a capacitance at the, at the, at the emitter diode, the base emitter region of this capacitor, this uh, second transistor. So at this region, the base current of the transistor increases and the base current increases means that reduces the current gain beta. So these are the two reasons by which at high frequency regions, the voltage gain decreases. Now at the mid frequency region, that is from 50 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. In this region, uh, the frequency in this frequency region, we are seeing almost a constant gain. Why? When the frequency starts to increase, capacitor reactance of the capacitor CC decreases. So as a result, the voltage gain increases. But the capacitor reactance uh, increases the loading effect at the next stage, at the second stage. And this loading effect will reduce the gain. So at one point, the gain start to increase. And at another point, the gain start to decrease at the same time. These two effects are almost equal and complementary. The increase in gain due to the decreased reactance of capacitor and the decrement in gain due to the loading effect are almost matching and in opposite directions. So in this region, in the region from 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, the gain almost remains constant. That's why we are seeing a flat response or a constant gain in the mid frequency region. This is how the frequency response curve is executed. Finally, we should see some advantages and disadvantages of RC coupled amplifier. The first advantage is the RC coupled amplifier is the most convenient and least expensive multi state amplifier. Uh, it has a wide frequency response, which means uh, the gain versus frequency curve remains constant over a wide frequency range. Finally, it provides less frequency distortion. So the frequency is here. So these are the advantages of RC coupled amplifier. On the other hand, it has certain disadvantages also. The first thing is that the overall gain of the amplifier is comparatively small uh, because of the loading effect that we have just discussed. Then it has a tendency to become noisy, particularly uh, at moist conditions and when um, the, the amplifier becomes aged. The main problem with RC coupled amplifier is that the impedance matching between the different stages is very, very difficult. So, uh, pure impedance matching is uh, a, a basic problem in RC coupled amplifier. 